this project was <coughs> originally the uh, downgrading of the beautiful Farnell oscillator that worked between one uh, hertz and approximately one mega hertz. It was damaged so I had to make, I did not have to make, but anyway I made another circuit and that's here and it's in the proceeding for, uh, sorry, five videos on my YouTube channel. So perhaps interesting to show the latest developments. Uh, when it's not interesting, no problem at all. You can surely skip this video. I made an oscillator with a field effect transistor and the original schematic is here. This is the original schematic. The first adaptation that I made was connecting a 4N7 capacitor from the, uh, say, from the input from all the coils to the output. That gave a very, very much better pure waveform, sine wave. So this is the schematic as it is now. here and there is of course a lot to tell uh, during the past days I uh, was experimenting with all kinds of coils you can see them here and here these coils for instance all um, small inductances and the first advice that I can give is uh, when you want to uh, make this oscillator, use these kinds of coils with a ferrite core inside. Because the quality of these coils is higher, that means that you have a better waveform in general, a more pure sine wave. So this is, an, this is a first advice. This is for instance such a coil, this is a ferrite core, and here two other ones, etc, etc. And I even have wound some coils myself. And you can see it here. These coils I have wound because um, they have given the best results. And I will tell more about that in this video. Here for instance, ferrite rod of one centimeter in diameter with a few windings. They are bonded with rubber cement, Bison kit in the Netherlands. This also uh, a coil home wound with 0.4 millimeter wire to get into the frequencies around one megahertz. And perhaps uh, it's interesting to tell that I have made by purpose here, by purpose, uh, this extra uh, coil. And you can shortcut this coil that goes to the oscillator, to the gate, and when you shortcut it, it of course does not have any effect on the frequency. The frequency is in that case completely uh, decided by this tank circuit that's here on the input. But when this switch is opened we have in fact two coils here that are connected uh, to the gate. And that means that both coils here, this coil and this coil, have an effect on the inductance and thus on the frequency. So uh, switching such a coil in uh, can make that uh, you have a certain frequency spread. The good thing of this oscillator is, after many tests, that it is very uh, eager to oscillate even when you connect here parallel to the tuning capacitor on the input a wire of 40 
um, 6 centimeters, it oscillates on approximately 10.6 megahertz. So that's a good thing. This capacitor here <coughs> can be switched in and that's especially for the lower frequencies. And furthermore, important to tell, the output is at this moment very high impedance. That means that when here, when the when you connect here, a meter or whatever, uh, the oscillator can stop because the impedance is too low. In fact, you are shortcutting the output of the oscillator. And we know, of course, that all all kinds of scopes. For instance, this one. And these two ones all have, say, and also the, this frequency counter has a standard input impedance of approximately one mega ohm. And that means that it does not load the output of the oscillator. That means that you can surely watch the, um, the waveform, um, uh, study the frequency, etc., etc. About the coils, I have already show, showed a few of them that I made. It took, it takes quite a long time, but you have an oscillator here that is very eager to oscillate, so almost all coils can be get into oscillation. And here are the, say, the first results of this te these tests that I did. Uh, perhaps this seems very unlogical because illogical because here you see perhaps uh, that uh, these two different different coils have the same frequency reach. But there is a certain logic and at the moment I cannot explain that exactly. Uh, it has everything to do with all the tests that I did. Say, you see, for instance, all kinds of tests. Uh, well, I don't want to dive too deep into all the experiments that I did. Uh, the most important thing is that almost every coil works with this oscillator. So you you can uh, um, surely search for all the frequencies that you need in this oscillator or in another oscillator that's made regarding the same principle. 500 picofarad tuning capacitor and here that field effect transistor oscillator. And all depends, the frequency bands depend, of course, on the settings. So, here, for instance, frequency depends on the question uh, whether this coil is shortcut or not. And also whether this uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor is switched in or not. Anyway. So, uh, some first results, a wire of 46 centimeters, the oscillator oscillates between 6 megacycles and approximately 11 megacycles. I measured 10.9 megacycles. Eight windings, one millimeter lacquered copper wire on a ferrite rod. That is this coil, that is what I mentioned here, this one. This one makes the whole oscillator work between um, 4.5 and 8 mega cycles. Here is that old ferrite coil. That's this coil here. Tiny, tiny coil. Now in the middle of the screen. Also responsible for a certain uh, frequency band. And here the coil with the blue windings. I had to make a few extra windings with white wire to get it into the frequency band. And that's here. 13 windings, 
ferrite rod for millimeters, etc. etc. So uh, that was more or less all. Always interesting to do these experiments, so do your own experiments. It is a very successful circuit that you can use uh, in all kinds of ways. For instance, as a VFO, local oscillator in a superheterodyne, analog, classic analog, radio, etc. Let me show some waveforms because perhaps it all gets very dry uh, when you don't see the practical results of this oscillator. So that will be the final phase of this video. I switch off the lights. I'm going to turn some, some knobs. This is one waveform. And I tune now that 500 picofarad capacitor. You can surely see the frequency change. But now we are on approximately 1.2 MHz. Turn the knob. Now I have no oscillation. So I do some switching here. I uh, shortcut the 18 microhenry extra capacitor. Now it works. And we are on 1.6 MHz. Tune a little bit. Another knob. We are on 1.5 MHz and now the highest frequency band. That's perhaps interesting to show. So this is a high frequency band and this is perhaps interesting to tell that on some settings the oscillation is very weak. So the next uh, step in this project will be to make a simple um, amplifier. Let's go to the highest frequency, 2.4, and this is the real highest frequency, so 8.04. Give the whole tank circuit more capacitance, that means of course that the frequency goes down. So this is the highest frequency band setting. That is between 4.5 and 8. I turn completely or in a random way another um, switch, and you can surely see that the waveforms are all very pure. It's only one setting where the waveform is not pure, but uh, the same frequency can be reached. Uh, in an other position of the knobs where the waveform is really pure. Thanks for watching. Wish you luck. Always fun to say do these experiments.